Hey guys, it's Kent Davis. I'm the Managing Director of Panama Equity Real Estate and today I'm going to tell you about some of the dangers of not using a real estate agent to buy property in Panama. So in 2007, I was in Atlanta, Georgia and I decided that I wanted to move to Panama. I actually was comparing it to a couple different places like Costa Rica and Venezuela. Ended up deciding on Panama. Started a little online business before I moved down here. And then once I got here, I started working for one of the biggest real estate companies in Panama. Less than a year later, I got fired, canned. Why? Because I wrote an expose called Blood on the Streets, Everything That's Wrong with Panama Real Estate Agents and Why I'm One of Them. You can read that, I'll include that in the link below. But I'm gonna summarize a little bit about what I've seen since 2007. So let's say you're a buyer looking to get something in Panama. Golly, it's easy enough to just hop online. Google Panama Real Estate, you'll come up with a couple of websites. You'll also see some directories of properties for sale. Encuentra 24 being one of the biggest ones. Compra Alquile, there's, there's, there's actually quite a few listing sites along with property agencies that publish their own listing. So here's what you're going to find straight away. The same property might be listed 10 times by 12 different agents at nine different prices. Get ready. There's your first time sucking beast, which is getting somebody on the phone, confirming the actual price, making sure it's the actual price, making sure that all the costs are already included so there are no surprises. Things like commissions and taxes are always paid by the seller, so know that going into it. You can absolutely buy property in Panama without using an agent. It's not illegal, but you're gonna run into some pitfalls, I can almost promise you. You definitely wanna have a lawyer. You definitely wanna have somebody to quarterback the deal because even if you have the best lawyer, there are moving parts and pieces that either the lawyer will be just complacent to let happen on their own or simply won't check for you. So you're on the listing sites, you see all these properties for sale, you start calling people, sometimes they answer, sometimes they don't, sometimes they speak English, sometimes they don't, sometimes they have all the information on hand. Is the property owned by a corporation or not? That makes a difference when you're buying for tax purposes in terms of the registered value getting updated when the property is conveyed. What about things like tenants? Who's in the property right now? How long has the property been for sale? Tell me about this price. Is it negotiable? Oh, it's, of course it's negotiable. Here's the last price. Sure, it's the last price. Okay, all of this probably seems kind of obvious. Like, yeah, I'm a seasoned investor, all good. Time is important when you're looking at a deal for another reason. Once you have a transaction agreed upon, let alone all the time it takes to get the agreement done, talk about due diligence. Prior to signing anything, you want to Make sure that if there's a tenant, look at the lease, find out how long the tenant has been there, how they've been paying. Why is that important? Because number one, a tenant can give you 30 days notice at any one time and they're gone and they're entitled to their deposit back. If you're purchasing a property with a tenant in place, find out and also make sure that the deposit gets conveyed. It's not just included in the price you pay. No, Mr. Seller, I also want you returning that deposit to me in addition to what I'm paying you. So that money needs to come back or get otherwise accounted for in the purchase price. Maybe it's just a discount, right? But it needs to get accounted for. What else? So negotiation, usually agents should be good negotiators. All my agents have read Never Split the Difference, Chris Voss, The Bible. Uh, we pay attention to all the subtleties of negotiating. So you wanna get a good price. Hopefully an agent will go to bat for you. Find out if the agent is also representing the seller. That happens, dual agency, it's not completely uncommon, but just be ready for it. What are other dangers? The other danger, so in addition to overpaying, right, because you don't know market price, we've 
Comps are really hard to find here. Comps come as a result of doing deals, watching the market, getting reports from your competition, in the case of an agency, talking to companies like Galeria Immobiliaria that has their finger on the pulse, really good source of income or in information. So comps are tricky, which means that you might end up paying a little bit more than you should. Agents are gonna get paid generally anywhere from five to as much as 10% of the value of the property. So you might say, oh gosh, if there's no agent, well, there's an automatic savings of 5%. Sellers, yeah, I mean, if you really negotiate well, if you know what the market is priced at and strike accordingly, then on that side, you probably should be good to go. Let's talk about after the deal gets signed and before the property gets conveyed or before the property gets delivered and you start making that rental income or you be able to occupy it. Well, there's generally gonna be, there has to be two different lawyers representing each side. Sorry, one lawyer on each side, total of two. If you have somebody that tries to tell you, oh, I'm representing the buyer and the seller on the lawyer side, yeah, run for the hills. Don't ever let that happen. On the agency side, it's a little bit more common. It's also kind of tricky. You wanna make sure the agent A is staying neutral and not to one side. In our case, we make sure that all of our agents do not ever ask the final price to the seller when we're taking the listing. There's little things you can do, but anyway. So on the deal side, you know, there's certain little ticking time bomb clauses that can get thrown into an agreement, either by default or tricky. So if you don't have a good lawyer, they're gonna miss that. The other side being a little, they call it juego vivo, which is basically like check your six or, you know, be ready for games and play accordingly. So yeah, that, it's nice to have somebody who's got experience in the room that could check on the lawyers, check on the due diligence, make sure all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed. And then once the agreement gets signed, get it to the finish line. Because a signed promise to purchase is not a done deal by any means. You've got, and oftentimes, uh, in many cases, banks involved, obviously that other lawyer on the other side, you gotta be on top of these folks. WhatsApp, email, in-person visits, phone calls. Whoever's representing you needs to be aggressive. If you're representing yourself, just be ready. Depends on what your dollar per hour is worth these days, but there are many things that can only be accomplished with an in-person visit, like a bank that loses documents or just takes forever because your banker just got fired. And now the new person has to figure out, oh my gosh, you know, where do we leave off on this case? It happens all the time. Government also makes mistakes in public registry and not the notary so much, but the notary is by no means a fact checker. The notary is a signature verifier and document compiler. They do not do any due diligence at the notary, FYI. So on the closing, you also wanna make sure that certain things are stipulated in the agreement like when am I gonna get the property? Do I get the property when I deliver the irrevocable letter of payment, which is kind of like our escrow? Do I get the property when you get paid or do I get the property at some other time? Again, you know, it, it sounds like common sense, but if your lawyer didn't cover it and the seller's lawyer just sort of flaked out on it, well, you've got a legal gray area if there's any hiccups. There are always hiccups. Be prepared for that. What else? Closing, inspection, conveyance. I think that pretty much covers it. It's time and money is what it is. If you're prepared to maybe pay a little bit more or have the deal take a little bit longer or even never come to fruition, don't use an agent. And you could check some of our other videos about how to vet for agents to make sure that they are proactive, detail-oriented, super diligent, and just on the ball because that's what you need in Panama, that's it. And also they're aware of the market, how many deals have they done in order to support your um, financials in terms of what you expect to rent a property out for or what you should be paying for it. So that's probably enough for today. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. If you like what you see, subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. Ciao.